Hey, what's going on guys? Eric, the SEO guy here, and I know what it takes to get you on top of Google search. Hey, what's going on guys? Eric, the SEO guy here, here with another video. Today we want to talk about the new Google update and how it's changing for search intent. Really, honestly, Google's been doing this the entire time. I've been seeing this go down the same road over and over again. Google wants more high quality content. Basically, all they mean by high quality content is content that matches the searcher's intent. And some of that content may have some other special things in there that tells Google, hey, this directly matches this searcher's intent. But I wanted to kind of define what search intent is, kind of show you examples of what it is. I found some great videos of people explaining kind of how to use it. And I also want to show you kind of of how you can use it that no one else has mentioned to be able to find some really great ideas. So let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Um, if we're looking for what is search intent, Yoast kind of ranked number one here for what is search intent. Um, basically, search intent is really just Google defining how by based on what the person is searching, like search intent. They knew exactly what I was trying to do when I put that keyword in. They knew I'm either looking for the definition or I'm looking for what is it without even typing what is. They still provided this same result. That's kind of a great example of what search intent is. They matched what I typed in with what they think my intention is. That's basically all search intent is. Now there's different forms of it. People say there's you know informational intent. So people are looking online, they're looking for information like weather, information about educating children, information about SEO. That doesn't really tell you anything though. You wanna match the intention, you're a business owner, let's say you're a small business owner, say you're um, a garage door repair company. Um, people are looking for information as how much does garage door repair cost? Look, Google knows this is exactly the kind of question I'm typing in without even typing in how much does. They'll instantly start providing me with results. How much does a garage door repair cost? See, they know exactly what to provide without me typing that in. They're getting better at matching the exact information that I'm trying to bring up here. Um, basically, to match that, you want to be able to create some kind of content that answers that question. It's honestly as simple as that. We've got our client here. We were able to answer that question even with someone else's answer. The fact that we found this question got searched so many times, 110 searches per month. We asked that question on the client's website, put that on their blog, and blah, blah we have a featured result here that gets this client thousands of clicks per month and the PPC value of this traffic alone is amazing. Let me just show you just this one post guys. This is insane. Okay. Pull this bad boy up here. Pull up our handy dandy webmasters or Ahrefs. A little more advanced than webmasters. <laughs> Boom. All right. Let's check this out here. Okay. Organic search. Oh, I'm sorry. I put in too much. Let's just, let's just go with the overall URL here. Okay. Uh oh, computer's freezing up here, guys. There we go. All right, now we're more in the range of where we need to be here. Okay, so organic search, check this out. Guys, these blog posts, can bring you some serious traffic. Look at these numbers at what June of just this year, that a busy time for them. 127,000 in PPC traffic alone. That means their blog posts brought in enough value per click that it would equal 131,000 running ads. That is insane guys. Um, and paid search, no ads found. We're literally running no ads. This is straight organic search. Look, if we jump over to the organic keywords here, you can see, look, that same blog post. Look, the position number one, garage door repair cost at $20 per click. Guys, oh my God. The, the, the PPC value of that is unexplainable at a search volume of a thousand per month. That alone, let's do the math. I'll do it right here in front of you so I'm not just lying to you. 1,000 times 20. If it got all those clicks, $20,000 in clicks. And now they, they're saying that you're not gonna get the total amount of clicks. You might get like a third or, or you know a little bit less than that if you're in the number one spot. 
Um, but still, I mean, that's an amazing amount of clicks just for one term, guys. And this is just one of their terms. A answering questions and blog posts is huge. Look, garage door not opening all the way. We put together a blog post, just simple post about a garage not opening all the way. <laughs> and guys, I look at oh, they're not bringing it up right now. That's okay. Um, about the garage door not opening all the way. And guys, this post, they're ranking number one. Look, it's $16 per click just to answer this question. I, I, I can't tell you how important it is just to answer simple questions about your industry. We found these by going to a simple site called answer, sorry guys, answerthepublic.com. We just simply went on down. We didn't even need a um, sign in or a GoPro, anything like that. Just came down here, straight to just type in garage. Oh, they got pop ups now. Garage door repair. Okay, and let's see the questions. They're literally going to provide us with questions asked about garage door repair. So you can literally come in here, type in your product or service, and see what questions people are asking. And if you have a fancy plugin like Keywords Everywhere, it'll even show you the cost per click on Google and what it's going for right now. What does garage door repair cost? How garage door repair? That didn't even sound right. How much does garage door? Okay, now we're actually finding one. See, that has a cost per click behind it. That has a search volume behind it. And I know for a fact that that one actually has more than that. But look, you can search that. Boom. Garage door repair cost. Look, it does match up with what Google said. Back that off. And I know the root term of that gets a ton more searches. Check this. 1,900 searches per month at a cost of 2208 per click. We have our client feature resulting in that section. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy they are to be there. And they're not paying us, honestly, that much to even be in that. That just happens, guys. If you answer these questions correctly, you give Google exactly what they're looking for. Make sure you kind of match the format of kind of what Google is looking for with this. Basically, Google was just looking for individual repair costs. We just added um, garage door panel replacement costs, garage door replacement costs, garage door open and repair costs. We did our full research to find information all across the web to say, hey, this is how much this costs according to Home Advisor members. According to 14,000 Home Advisor members, this is how much the average cost of garage door is. So if anything, we're just reporting and taking major rankings over places like Home Advisor, Yelp, and all these different places who are trying to do the same thing. A lot of these guys are just pulling leads so they can sell them to the companies. Why not pull these leads in yourself? That's the best possible way to do it. But the best way to do it is by matching that search intent. We knew that people wanted to know how much garage door repair costs. And not only that, but a full range of costs, not just, oh, the average cost is some big number and you don't really have any way of, you know, saying, hey, here's why that's this cost. Here's this specific cost. Here's this specific cost. The more you kind of break that down, the more Google's like, whoa, okay, there's a lot of great information in here. I might bring this over some other people. And then once the information starts coming back, you know, you start seeing your impressions and clicks and webmasters, you can kind of refine from there. But matching the intent is absolutely huge. Um, but back to, so informational intent, that actually is kind of the next step to transactional intent, which is about to come up here because honestly, if someone's asking how much something costs, their next step is to probably purchase that. They're just making sure that they have enough money to make this happen. I see this a lot in the um, service businesses. Uh, a lot of people that do like, you know, any kind of home services, um, AC repair, plumbers, a lot of stuff like that. People are typing in how much this stuff costs all the time. How much does it cost to fix my sewer pipe? How much does it cost to fix my leaky roof? How much does roof repair cost? That's a huge one. We rank for that. <laughs> you know, these, these, these words, their, their, their intention is to figure out how much it costs. If you can just provide them with that backed by resources, Google will absolutely love you. But they're saying, okay, navigational intent. Navigational intent is when people are trying to get to a specific website. So they're going to that place anyway. So this has nothing to do with SEO. They're already going there. They have an idea in mind. They're going to Facebook, type on facebook.com, it's over. Transactional intent. This is where people are actually interested in buying whatever product and service. If we go back to the um, garage door repair example, honestly, people would type in garage door repair just by itself, you know, and start looking. And look, Google knows to pull up maps. You know, they know people are looking for companies. Look, you know, the reviews start showing. Yelp starts showing with the 10 best garage door repair. You're going to see Yelp for dang near everything with their 10 best, but we can beat them out, guys. I promise you. Okay, garage door repair. 
Um, garage door replacement. Google still knows the same thing. And look, you're even seeing them start to bring up near me because that's one of the next phrases. If they're not typing in replacement, they're typing in replacement near me or replacement in the city. But the city's being used a lot less. A lot of people are still um, optimizing for like garage door repair Phoenix. When honestly, people are typing in all kinds of stuff. You don't have to have Phoenix on your stuff as much like that. You can still rank. I can rank with a totally another city or just put Arizona and still rank for Phoenix. As long as you do the content correctly and match kind of what Google's looking for here, they're gonna be looking for reviews. Look at this. You see reviews all over the place reviews 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 it's no it doesn't surprise me this guy ranks number one with the reviews this is an actual company you know not a not a listing kind of like this is but you know his reviews actually show you know that's going to make you stand out but being able to probably provide an address being able to provide content that describes what you do what types of garage door repair you offer and definitely location information i mean look they're sitting there showing you all oh, shopping maps pay attention to this section whenever you're doing your google searches because this will change Look, so compared to, so this is all shopping, maps, news, videos. Let's go back to our informational search and see what they show. All shopping, images, news, videos. Okay. You've seen that maps went away now. Okay, now maps is back. What do you know? Because garage door repair cost is one step away from you getting that product or service. Look, they're not quite showing um, actual um, uh, maps listings here yet, but they know just based on that term that you're probably looking for companies. Look, they even started showing ads for that. A lot of people know that this is an actual keyword that can lead to a, a purchase, you know, in transaction. Um, so this is honestly teetering a transactional keyword, but is an informational keyword. And if you left this out, I mean, that would be a, a bad mistake. You know, as we saw garage door repair cost alone at $22 a click. That would be a horrible mistake. They're paying more to show up for that cost than a lot of the other way it searched. But even garage door repair alone, look, 28 bucks. So you see garage door repair cost is actually a pretty close transactional keyword, but still informational. So if you can answer that with actual information, that's where you're gonna win the game at. Okay, so and they're saying there's also, you know, commercial investigation. Basically, it's people just researching your company are researching, you know, a bigger company to see, hey, is this the best washing machine? Is this the best product? Um, let's read the reviews. Let's um, read more information about. Let's read comparisons. Um, it would be great to answer some of those with comparisons. But honestly, I don't see a lot of this in um, small business SEO other than people searching that person's name and their reviews, like the name of the garage door repair company and reviews, you know, and eventually they'll have their own search. Like their, their name will actually have a search volume behind it because more people will find out about them and search them to make sure they're a good company. Um, keyword intent. Um, these words people use in search queries will give information about their user intent. Absolutely. If they use words like buy, deal, discount, I see a lot of, um, the word cheap used in the home services industries. Everybody's using that word cheap. And if you can use that word cheap, oh my God, it differentiates your page. And not only that, but look at the cost per click behind this bad boy, cheap garage door repair. But you see the competition is a little less because we're using that cheap keyword. But that's an actual, um, that's an actual um, transactional keyword as well. So not only is it, you know, uh, keyword uh, the keyword intent you know that's a transactional type of phrase you know if you're gonna buy something like buy garage door we're most likely gonna present it with shopping type stuff look shopping is always next in that line there and then look actual businesses look we got ads showing look we got actual garage doors here sponsored look by Google they're actually showing these ads showing these different garage doors for sale so Google knows what the person's trying to do. So if you can provide Google with that information and say, hey, we have that information right here on our site. Google is so good, especially if it's locational type stuff, if it's local types of stuff, and you can make a national post, Google will still rank you locally for that exact same information. It is insane how they can actually do this, but they can match the intention and match the location. So even if you're creating somewhat duplicate content or what's called copywriting, just basically taking 
what's there and hopefully making it better, you know, to, you know, give the user exactly what they came to get. You know, if you can add page jumps, if you can make the navigation even easier, if you can make the headings better so it kind of separates the content, there's all kinds of things you can do to make that same content better and match the intention even more. A lot of these guides are out here. They're old. Um, people haven't updated them, them for years. They're out there ranking, you know, in that number one position, sometimes with just a small portion of content. And if you just knew that keyword was there, like garage door repair costs, before we knew that was there, we were struggling a little bit. We had the people coming up for garage door repair um, and their city. It was in, you know, Mesa, Arizona, but their city's honestly not that big. But once we started getting into these informational types of searches and, you know, things like people saying, why is my garage door not opening all the way? Answering those questions. Oh my God, their SEO just took off. I mean, you've seen the results coming back from this bad boy. You know, they are getting some awesome traffic simply just from answering these questions on their, you know, on their blog. I mean, it's crazy. And the traffic does go back and forth a lot here. But I mean, look at this. I mean, we took this site from dang near nothing. You know, they were getting a very small amount of traffic. And it was even worse going back before this. We've had this client for years. You know, look at this. But look, the PPC value was still pretty good, you know, about $7,000 per month. But to take it up over $100,000 per month simply by answering questions. I mean, we're not sitting here writing crazy 2,500 word long blog posts. I mean, we're answering simple questions of why the garage door won't open all the way, what you can do to fix it, and if not, offering the repair help of that local company. So if anybody happened to be searching that and they were in their local area, which happened very often, they ended up hiring them to do it because they had a knowledgeable, they found them in the number one spot for their problem and sees they offer their services, reverses, looks up their company to make sure they have the reviews, they have the reviews and boom, they got the client, you know, simply based off an informational search. We get people, honestly, uh, a lot of the value that comes from what we do is getting people ranking for these types of searches because these are the always the ones that are left out. These are the ones that people never have on their blog. Not a single other blog in Phoenix had this question answered on their blog. And if they did, they didn't answer it in the proper format Google was looking for. It's like they didn't even search the keyword and say, okay, what, what results is Google providing? You know, let me take a look at this. Boom. This guy's answer, how much does a garage door repair cost? Well, we're going to probably want to match that same intent. He's asking that question. So I almost guarantee he's going to answer that question within this blog post. You know, so he's going through, he's got a bunch of content up here. The first thing I did was just eliminate all this gibberish. The person just said, how much does garage door repair cost? Why isn't your answer right there in a big graph, something displaying the average cost? Um, I see HomeAdvisor doing this a lot. Um, that's why we were actually able to beat this guy out for a good amount of searches. He does get a good amount of stuff, but honestly, his costs are so spread out. Look, $2 for as much as four. Come on, that's... Uh, look, now we start to actually get into some costs here, you know, but this is just a bunch of content that doesn't really all focus on the cost. Most of this content is actually focused on other stuff. Yes, he put a bunch of text in here, but we're able to beat guys out like this all the time because we give a very precise post and giving exactly what they came to look for and not a bunch of extra gibberish they weren't looking for and provide nice graphs that end up ranking number one almost every single time because Google just loves graphs and they give it to us almost every time guys this is my graph right here we instantly took over this no problem look we have three graphs right there at the top look another one right here because we answered this question multiple times in multiple ways this is also the first image we created this is just ranking number one because we've updated this so many times it says 2019 but this started in like 2015 but um, we've had these guys for a good amount of time now. Honestly, this is an easy way to provide those costs. This is an easy way. And Google almost ranks these immediately. You know, I did one today and it got up to the third spot. And it was like one minute ago this was posted. It was insane. It was just like, oh, my God, Google severely loves these graphs. And to answer a cost question with a graph totally matches the intent. So Google knows like, hey, absolutely show them that because that that it clearly describes what's going on here. That's why Google's featuring this image. They're like, hey, they're talking about broken springs, sections. They can tell we've done our research here, you know, even in the image. Google can see images, I promise you. I don't know what other people have told you, but Google sees these images. They know it's a graph. They know what it is because they will instantly put it to the top, even sometimes when my post hasn't even made it all the way up yet. So matching that intent with better 
than what the user expected. You know, with all those graphs and all that information, that's a lot better than just kind of giving people a big old piece of content and then you eventually answer the questions way down here. Make the questions super easy to read and people will reward you for that. People are linking to these posts. We started this blog post, it had zero backlinks. We weren't building any backlinks to this site. Honestly, and these backlinks just started coming on their own. As the traffic as the traffic came up, the backlinks came up. We built zero backlinks to this post, ladies and gentlemen. The one that's getting us $128,000 a month in PPC traffic organically. We built zero backlinks to this post. We even had a plugin. Uh, we were using the Hrefs toolbar for a while where you could see the backlinks. And it was insane to see something like home guide and it was like you know 3,000 links and it was like home advisor 5,028 links and our post right here had zero links ranking over them until it eventually you know started getting its own links because people are linking to it for information you know people always link to the biggest blog post or the number one uh, search you know while they're doing their own research we do the same thing that's how we actually take over everybody we'll list home advisor we're listing what a1 says we're listing what home guide says we're listing what all the people all the big names in the industry Angie's list all these all these guys know SEO and they are doing it big time because they know they can provide leads to their clients guess what if Angie's list is doing it home advisor do it guess what the only thing they do is provide leads if they're putting out these posts guaranteed that tells you they know that money comes from this and not only that but look almost everything we type in with that has a cost per click behind it guys so if you happen to show up as that result you can get those customers to come to your blog for free you know or if you know you're paying your SEO costs but you eventually will get a ton more of your ROI from answering all these questions because people are looking for this they want to find this information regardless if you're gonna give it to them or not or and if it's not on your site well then they're gonna find home advisor and then you can just pay home advisor for their leads or you can pay Angie's list for their leads or you can pull the leads to your own site or if you're an SEO or you can get these leads for your own clients you know and make make your job much easier uh, in either case but search intent is huge and honestly I, I love a video that um, Ryan Stewart he's definitely a guy that's been an SEO game for a while bought and sold a couple of companies you know took them from nothing um, but uh, I, I love this video and just wanted you the example to of how to get rid of pimples. So let's say, for example, somebody is searching for how to get rid of pimples. If we're looking at the pure keyword intent, it's top funnel informational, right? It's a how to search. Just playing off the back of this exercise, if we're just working off keyword intent here, we're likely going to create a blog post or a resource guide, etc. Again, nothing too groundbreaking there. You know that. So if we stop there, we'll never rank. Why? This is where SERP intent comes into play. This is where we have to take our keyword and go to Google and understand not just what, hey, this is what the searcher might be looking for when how to get rid of pimples, but what Google is telling us that the results should be. Because remember, Google is, Google's algorithm is constantly modifying itself based on what searchers are, how their searchers are behaving in the search. So for example, if somebody's searching for how to get rid of pimples overnight and the result all the way in number eight is the one that they, everyone keeps clicking on, that result over time is gonna move up, right? And we see this happening because when we look at the search engine results for how to get rid of pimples, what we see is that every single result type in there is about fast, overnight, quickly. Because the intent, the real intent behind that keyword is telling us that people wanna do this fast. And if we're just doing keyword research and if we're just tagging this, you know, with our traditional methods of tagging keyword intent, we're never gonna un understand what Google is telling us that should be ranking. So what's happening here is the sub keyword or the smaller keyword is actually overtaking the main keyword or the head keyword in this case because of the SERP intent, because people overwhelmingly want to get rid of their pimples fast and overnight. But without taking that extra step to understand SERP intent, what's gonna happen is we're gonna create a piece of content about how to get rid of pimples. We're probably not gonna include the fast and you're never gonna rank for that keyword because Again, what Google is telling us is that if you want to rank for how to get rid of pimples, it has to be about how to get rid of pimples fast or fast. All right, guys, as you can see, I love that he gave that example. We've actually done that same thing for a pool company with how to clean a green pool fast. We actually started off with a post and we, we thought, hey, we can take this. Um, you know, with just a regular amount of text, you know, our thing was on like page three or something like that. When we eventually realized that people were searching how to green and green pool fast or how to green and green pool in 24 hours. And matching that and answering that question and giving people that content, look, 24 hours, you know, they know that 
people are looking to do this in a very quick manner. We've actually done this um, for a couple different pool companies and we actually helped this guy get his video here by adding just that single keyword and tagging it with that same one. Um, hey guys, this video is a little over a million American views pool. now. This guy was actually mad at us <laughs> for actually adding that keyword. He actually asked us, you know, what was the best keyword to add and we were optimizing his account at the time so we just went ahead and went ahead and added it but he was mad. He actually wanted to learn this on his own. This guy did has since left us um, and honestly went and built his own site we uh, we didn't realize but he was trying to learn SEO on his own which is totally fine but you know we, we we can consult for that we can train for that we can train you to do that you know we can pay for consulting time we can absolutely show you what to do for your own site in your own videos but this definitely helped this guy this helped his uh, video and his actual blog post as amongst other tons of different searches we found for him that we were able to answer and get people to find his blog just by searching these different terms. Now, you're not always going to have this fast keyword on there or something like that. Um, because like what well, the example I was showing you for garage door repair cost there is no special way that that's going to be said you see near me was starting to show up so maybe if you did some kind of locational post with that that could help as well but honestly just simply answering this question straight up with a how much does garage door repair cost will do the trick for you as long as you're including other important ones too garage door panel repair cost having an H2 that's asking that question and then answering that under there and maybe source that from home advisor so that from a1 garage you know our garage door opener repair cost that's going to be the same thing Google's trying to answer that question and look they pretty much give you the the good answer look this much text answers that question perfectly sometimes I would literally take this quote it and then link back to this guide and say according to home guide this answer we've actually taken um, results with other people's answer. Actually, I believe that uh, result we just shown you um, when we asked the full question, how much does, because this goes back and forth, Google trades back and forth. Look, according to Home Advisor, look, we use someone else's answer just to report that information on our website and look, Google gives us the credit for it. Why are they showing that? Because they know we match the user's intention specifically by saying, hey, not only are we giving you the average cost, but we're giving you a source to back that up. So you know that information is backed by something. And not only that, but you can click the link to go to the Home Advisor site, not on here, but on their actual blog post. And that'll actually take you to their post and you can see that that information is backed up. That's, an, that's the number and it's usually backed up by a certain amount of members, like 17 thousand home advisor members said this specific information so you know it's backed up but honestly guys matching this intent is super huge just know you're not always gonna have to have some special way that it's gonna have to be there to rank we simply answered this question this is nothing special garage door repair and replacement costs in 2018 2019 we did include some nice images on this bad boy that did help it rank honestly for these cost questions I think graphs and images are huge honestly I think that's sometimes the sole reason we take the rank right away is because of those graphs those images we've studied the way Google is displaying these results for these cost questions and provided the answers that Google is looking for and not only that but provided media as well and some of these will put videos behind it as well and that just kind of backlinks to the post the post and then Google can see there's an image there there's content about it there's a video there there's multiple pieces of media that back up these results and sometimes you can see what media you'd actually need there just by looking at what they're displaying all shopping images news videos look so having one of these five or three of these five in our post, it makes sense why Google deems us the number one. Plus we're backing our answer up with the other answers that are here. So it's almost like, here Google, take every answer you just listed on the top 10 results of this page and find it all on this one post, backed by graphs and sources that cite everything that we said. Who would you give the rank to? The guy who said the one cost and just backed it by some members or would you the, the, the cost that every expert said backed by sources? It makes sense. You Google, Google will give you cool points just because you're backing this up with you know an authority you know Google's getting a lot better at being able to see you know fake news or you know you know fake content they want to see things backed up and when you can link it up I mean that just in there it makes their rank bring at ease they're like hey this matches they got a picture they got a video rank the page bro 
You know what I'm saying? It's not even it's it's a no brainer in their rank brain. It just instantly happens. I see the images go from straight from nowhere to straight fetching that page and the image becoming the number one image within seconds of actually indexing and fetching that manually, you know, through webmasters, which anyone can do. Boom. Go to your performance, pop your guy in there. Boom, you're instantly going to retrieving data from Google Index. This is for uh, powersolarphoenix.com, a different company. And look, I can request indexing just like that. Boom, now I'm indexing that in Google. And I can then go back and say, boom, how to cool a garage with no windows. We've already done this before, so I'm not doing this for the first time. But it's the same exact thing, though. I would fetch it just like that, come back in here, and boom, there's my image. What do you know? Why are my images always ranking here? You know, it's because I've studied what Google's trying to show here and provide them the best way to do that. Look, this image completely matches the search intent. How to cool a garage with no windows. Look, here's a little garage AC. Here's the cool side. Look, here's without any of that stuff. The heat stays in. Boom, look, radiant barrier. Heat stays out. Mini split keeps the place cool. Look, this part is 78. Look, this part is 120. What do you know? This is the, pretty much the same graph, but with actual radiant barrier in there, an actual attic fan in there, an actual mini split in there. So we've just matched the user's intention. You know, that's all we're doing. They're looking how to cool a garage with no windows. And guess what this company does? They also offer services to cool a garage with no windows. So we're matching this to show people, hey, this is the best way you can possibly do this. Install garage attic installation, garage attic fan, garage door installation, install a garage air conditioner. So we're showing people how to do it. We have a nice little video that goes about different ways to do it, but saying, hey, here's how to do it. This is what you could do, this is what you could save, but not only that, but we offer services for every single one of these bad boys. So not only are people finding this post, but they also can go to see the services to say, hey, if I do want the radiant barrier, well, I need a professional to do that. If I do want the garage mini split, I need a professional to do that. So really you're providing them information that leads them into your services. Without this, they're just finding blog posts like this guy. How to cool a garage with no windows. This is the only guy in front of us. We trade positions between one and two, but eventually we'll have him for sure. Um, but he's just providing basic, um, open the garage door, um, add portable fans, you know, try a dehumidifier, no real options that offer you effective cooling. And then he starts getting into a little more permanent solutions. But look, then where do you get that done at? Okay, install new and now I need to go search again. No, boom. If you're on our post, you could just go straight to okay, view garage attic installation services. Here we go. Let's take us to that page. And then boom, we're reading about our attic installation services, seeing where we can actually get them done at. Um, people can, you know, either call or get a free quote. They can see the service area. They can read reviews, all everything they'll be looking for. They can read more information about the products and services in which these pages are meant to rank as on their own as well. These are more the, uh, the buyer intent pages. This is, you know, when someone's actually searching for the products or service. So um, cooling uh, garage cooling services, Phoenix. Boom, this is what, you know, this would be more of a buyer intent keyword. People know they want garage cooling services, so they're coming straight to Google to be able to show ranks for, and look, they rank that same blog post. Even though this is a buyer intent keyword, they still rank this blog post because they know this tire talks about hiring professionals garage cooling services, and it leads to actual garage cooling services. So it makes sense why Google would rank this. This doesn't have a ton of search volume behind it, but I'm just showing the difference between someone looking for an informational versus an actual someone ready to go. They're ready to hire that right now, you know, and honestly, as long as you match that intention on your pages, with your actual information about your products and services, or you answer your questions with your blog posts, that's how you win the game. But honestly, a lot of times these blog posts can work as actual transactional pages as well, as long as you set them up correctly. But honestly, I just wanted you guys to know this information, to know more about search intent, and know that you can match that. Just simply do a Google search for whatever your product or service is. You know, or use answer the public. Honestly, this is huge for finding different ideas. If you can use a you know a program like Ahrefs, they can give you even more ideas with their keyword explorer. You know, if I go in here and type in garage door repair cost, boop. Okay, boom. This is going to provide me with 
questions all about that going straight down the line how much does it cost to repair a garage door how much does it cost to repair a broken garage door spring see that would be a totally another question that if you had that on your post that would help you rank more for it but honestly these types of questions can absolutely help you rank extremely well um, Definitely learn more about matching user search intent. Do Google searches yourself and see what Google is showing. Are they showing content or are they showing maps? You know, what are they showing? That, that'll tell you a lot about kind of what Google wants to see for that specific keyword. You know, if they're showing products for your main keyword, show products. You know, if you have, if they're searching for a, something like cabinet doors, look, they might be looking locally, but probably a lot of the times they're going to actually be looking to buy cabinet doors online. You know, we've done, we did a SEO for a guy that did cabinet doors for quite a while, got him working really well. And honestly, with just an e-commerce scenario, that's what does it every time. Like, look at this. This is a search for cabinet doors. Guess what? It's going to be some kind of e-commerce layout, a little bit of a heading with cabinet doors and look a little bit of a content with some different kind of links here to show they have different styles of cabinet doors. But look, just an e-commerce type shopping cart. Boom. And Google knows. They're like, hey. This is titled correctly. Look, the site says cabinet doors, replacement kitchen cabinet doors and custom ones. Look, there's an H1 here that clearly states the title of this page and only that. It makes sense why these people rank for cabinet doors. They provided more value by letting you be able to go to see different styles of cabinet doors and they provided exactly what Google was looking for was a bunch of different cabinet doors. So the format of this page makes total sense. If someone was to try to only put content like this and just make it super long and only offer these links, you're not going to rank as well. Google is looking for an actual shopping cart. They're looking for prices. They know people are looking to buy based off of a keyword like that. So honestly, guys, just typing in the keyword alone and seeing what's shown will tell you a lot about what Google wants to see. They're ranking that number one because that's exact format they want to see. If you can match that format and somehow provide a better value than the previous person did, as you saw with the A1 garage guy, we were able to beat him out by simply answering the question better and giving the results a lot sooner. You know, he was just basically taking a long time to answer the question. We answered the question right away and provided graphs that went over that. So it was an easy win, you know? So just by analyzing what was there, seeing what the person was looking for and optimizing more for that intention, scored us that ranking $128,000 in PPC traffic per month later. The client is winning and, uh, you know, we're all very happy, you know, but, you know, it's definitely a learning process, but, you know, I'm, I hope you guys got some kind of value out of this video, but I definitely, I had to do this one. This is going to be the newest thing with the Google Burt update, I believe they're calling it. And, uh, you know, search your intent is going to be huge. So being able to match that with your SEO is absolutely even bigger. So, you know, definitely, you know, keep your mind open. Uh, uh, make sure you're, you're out there doing your research. See what Google's showing. You'll be able to make a great page, I promise you. And if you can't, holla at your boy because I love doing this stuff. I love making these cost posts. I love analyzing Google and seeing what people are intended to find versus what they do and optimizing better for that. So I love you guys, man. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you got some kind of value or learned something today. Please like, comment, share, help other people learn this information. But I appreciate you guys coming through. Much love, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. The moonwalk on Google search.